Hello, I'm David Frazier with Investors Monitor, and this is our daily Market Insights show where we strive to tell you everything that you need to know, but nothing more regarding factors and developments that are likely to impact the value of your financial market portfolios. So today on Tuesday, September 15th, at around 8.45 in the morning Eastern Time, trading action in the futures markets indicates that the major stock market indices for the United States and stock prices in general are likely to open up pretty much flat today uh, in comparison to, to yesterday's close. Now, what's going to happen throughout the trading day on Tuesday, September 15th? I don't have a clue. Uh, what I can tell you is that over the past few days, uh, stock prices in general is measured by the major stock market indices have moved in a narrow uh, sideways pattern and that the trading volume for the major stock market indices was lighter and lighter over the past few days. And that actually shouldn't be surprised in at all and the reason being that active traders in stocks are waiting to see what the Federal Reserve is going to announce uh, on Thursday of this week regarding its latest decision for interest rates. And I don't, also don't know what the Fed's going to do regarding interest rates. What I do know is this, that the latest economic statistics for the United States indicates, as those statistics have indicated over the past couple of months, that economic growth in the U.S is likely to slow over the next few months. Secondly, the most recent statistic, statistics regarding inflation indicates that there are no inflationary um, uh, pressures. So those type of statistics suggest to me, well they don't suggest, they make uh, uh, it very clear to me that there is no reason whatsoever for the Fed to raise interest rates. So whether or not they actually do so, I don't know. Uh, but economic statistics clearly indicate that there's no reason for the Fed to raise rates. So my thinking is that the Fed will not raise interest rates this coming Thursday. Short-term interest rates, that is. The Fed has uh, little to no control what happens uh, regarding longer-term uh, lending rates. Having said that, my research indicates it really doesn't matter what the Fed decides to do. And the reason I say that is uh, history has shown that after long periods uh, of time that the Fed kept short-term interest rates at low levels and then raised rates uh, for the first time, that stock prices in general reacted over the ensuing weeks and months uh, almost not at all to such a decision. You usually see uh, uh, stock prices jump or fall sharply uh, within hours uh, of an announcement of a rate hike, but uh, over the ensuing weeks and months of a first time rate hike, you know, pretty much no impact whatsoever regarding what the Fed did. So it doesn't make any difference to me uh, what the Fed announces this coming Thursday. And folks that are that I've listened to and uh, adhere to our recommendations regarding how to uh, position their portfolios properly should also have no concern whether or not the, the uh, Fed decides to raise rates. And the reason I say that is we advised our clients, uh, other than uh, fixed income clients, we advised uh, our stock market uh, clients, or I guess I should say uh, folks who who position their portfolios in stocks uh, according to our research, we advise those folks to get completely out of stocks on May 6th of this year. So persons that followed our advice uh, have been really just very, very comfortable and sitting in cash while a lot of other uh, stock market participants have been very concerned and really don't know what to do. Having said that, let's move, uh, let's move on to the latest economic announcements. And we got a, uh, an announcement from uh, the uh, U.S. Department of Commerce uh, this morning showing that uh, retail sales 
in the U.S. slowed considerably uh, during uh, August, especially when you compare it to the prior month. Specifically, during July of this year, uh, sales at U.S. retail outlets were up 2.6% as compared to July of last year. And that's an annual, and if you looked at just the quarterly from uh, July versus um, June of this year, on an annualized basis, retail sales were up 8.5% during July. However, uh, statistics released this morning from the Department of Commerce showed that on a year-over-year -year basis for the month of August, uh, retail sales were up early, excuse me, I have to put on my glasses, were up early 2.2% on a year-over-year -year basis during August and that uh, versus 2.6% during July. And on a quarter-to-quarter -quarter annualized basis, retail sales for August were up only 2.3% during August versus 8.5% annualized during July. So a big slowdown in retail sales. And that's nominal sales, by the way. That's not looking at uh, inflation-adjusted sales. Uh, there have not been any uh, releases issued yet regarding uh, inflation-adjusted retail sales. However, using July's CPI figures, I'm showing that um, real retail sales, that, that is inflation adjusted retail sales, were up only 1.9% on a year over year basis during August versus up 2.4% during July. And once again, if we annualized month to month figures, which for some reason many economists like to do, it's not what I pay much attention to because because there can be a lot of volatility on a month-to-month -month basis. I prefer looking at year-over-year um, -year comparisons. But if we take a look at uh, the quarter-to-quarter uh, -quarter, uh, annualized change in inflation-adjusted retail sales, we find that retail sales were up only 2.3% during August on an annualized basis versus up 6.9% uh, during July. So I know that's a lot of statistics to throw at you to keep it simple and to summarize. Uh, we saw a uh, pretty significant slowdown in the uh, pace of increase in retail sales during August. And that's very, very significant. And the reason I say it's very significant is historically retail sales have been a very reliable coincident economic indicator, meaning that the direction of retail sales, uh, or I guess I should say, the direction of the overall economy here in the United States tends to move in the same direction and to change direction right about the same time as um, the direction and changes in retail sales. So if we're seeing a slowdown in retail sales, which means that we're seeing a slowdown in, in spending uh, by U.S. households, we're likely to see the pace of economic growth in the United States slow during the months ahead. Now, if we take a look at the other major uh, coincident economic indicator that the National Bureau uh, of Economic Research and Analysis monitors uh, to determine uh, uh, expansions and recessions and, and whether or not the economy seems to be peaking or bottoming, and that is industrial production. If we take a look at industrial production, uh, industrial production at, at U.S. factories, uh, utilities, and, and, and mining companies was up only 0.9% during August versus the same month a year ago uh, versus up, uh, up 1.3% during July. Uh, if we annualize the quarter-to-quarter -quarter changes once again, we see that uh, industrial production during August versus July, and then annualize those figures, was down, down 4.5% during August. So we've, we've obviously seen a big slowdown in industrial production, and if we just look at a month-to-month -month basis, an actual decline in industrial production during August. So, these statistics clearly reveal to me, and it should reveal to you and anyone else, 
uh, that there's no reason for the Fed to raise interest rates, especially once again, considering that there are really no inflationary pressures whatsoever. And if the Fed therefore really does go by the data, which it claims to do, then that would suggest that the Fed's not going to raise rate interest rates this coming Thursday. If we look at one other major economic statistic, and that is a, um, a uh, uh, statistics that relate to surveys that the Federal Reserve Bank of New York conducts every month, and this is the, uh, it's called the Empire Manufacturing Index. Uh, the New York Fed announced this morning that um, uh, manufacturing activity during the first two weeks of September continued to contract uh, in New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut after declining sharply during uh, July, uh, 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 I'm sorry, during uh, August of this year. So, just one more economic statistic, and by the way, that's been a very reliable leading economic statistic that indicates that the pace of economic growth in the United States will uh, slow over the next few months. So, all of those statistics, which may be boring to some of you, but extremely important statistics, so it should not be boring, these are the type of statistics that you should be paying attention to uh, in, instead of nonsense uh, that you hear on the major uh, financial news shows uh, regarding what's going on in China that has a very little impact on the U.S. or that what's going on with Apple's uh, stock price. You know, those are distractions. What's important are these statistics that I mentioned to you, as well as statistics that indicate what big institutional investors are doing. And by the way, as I mentioned last week uh, and, and the week before, uh, statistics regarding what uh, uh, the, the, uh, the so-called smart money, the, the large institutional investors, what they've actually been doing in comparison to what they're telling individual investors, uh, statistics clearly suggest that those investors, those large um, investors that are really, that really determine the direction of stock prices, that they've gotten much more defensive in their portfolio all allocations over the past few months, and that they've been distributing stocks, is the phrase that's used uh, uh, among financial market pun pundits, meaning that they've uh, been reducing their allocations to stocks and, and, and increasing their allocations to cash-like investments and have been getting a lot more defensive in their stock holdings, uh, meaning uh, putting more money in consumer staples and utility stocks and telecommunication stocks and getting uh, out of uh, uh, some degree uh, growth in cyclical stocks. So, well, that wasn't the most exciting show, I don't think. Uh, uh, today, but uh, uh, to wrap up, let me say again that what we strive to do here at uh, Fraser and Mayer Research LLC, the providers of Investors Monitor and InvestorsMonitor.com and, and on our daily market uh, insight show, is to we strive to tell you everything that you need to know, but nothing more regarding factors and developments that are likely to impact the value of your financial market portfolios. And keep in mind that this is a show where serious uh, investors, traders, and speculators tune in every day to uh, determine what's really uh, affecting uh, the financial markets. So I thank you for listening, and I encourage you to visit our website if you're not watching this show on our website at www.investorsmonitor.com and to sign up for our free weekly uh, market commentary, uh, I, a um, commentary that we produce every Saturday uh, that uh, does not cost you a penny, a penny. You do not even need to provide us with any credit card information. You just need to give us your name and email address. So we thank you for watching and uh, we look forward to uh, speaking with you again tomorrow.